Of course I'm ready. Let me start my video here. <laughs> Always ready. And I believe uh, Abby is in chat here. We need a promoter. Is that right? Yes. Abigail, I'm assuming, uh, promoting to panelists now. Um, guys, everyone, this is Kurt Elster, host of the unofficial Shopify podcast. Uh, and he runs EtherCycle. Uh, hi, and this is Abby Walker from uh, Vivian Liu. We are going, I'm gonna let you guys chat, introduce each other and, and talk. I'm just gonna step out of the way. Really looking forward to your conversation. Thank you, Derek. Appreciate it. Let's see. <coughs> Miss Abigail Walker. Hello, Kurt, how are you? AKA Abby. <laughs> Author, what was the name of your book? I have it sitting over here. Well, I forgot. Strap that. on a pair. Strap on a pair. I knew it had a fantastic name. <laughs> and it, that book is is really about uh, the story of your business of growing your insole business from a like a, a hobby niche thing you found to something that's been featured on uh, well on all kinds of places. Yes. So we have been. Um, we're sold on HSN. We've been featured on The View. We've been featured on Good Morning America. We've been in Real Simple, Oprah Magazine, a wide variety of uh, media outlets. So, uh, And how does one get that successful at PR? I mean, that's <laughs> stunning. Okay, so honestly, the way that I got my the beginning um, is going through and answering those Help a Reporter Out emails. And oh, so, really? Haro? Help Haro. a Reporter Out? Yeah. I can't believe it. No, swear, like um, USA Today, real simple. And um, there was another big one that I got through Haro. It's incredible. Mm. And it takes a long time to answer, but if you, cause you can't like necessarily can your answers, but once you get really, you can get efficient at answering some of those emails. And in fact, I've actually started going back to answering some, some Haro emails. Just to I see used, what happens. I used Haro years ago and yeah. I've been quoted in all kinds of publications as a result. Yeah and got early backlinks out of it, it was cool. It's incredible. Uh, but now it seems like it, it's more saturated. Does it still work today? Have you had recent success with it? Um, I've had recent success, not in the big mainstream publications, but in smaller, like now everyone's doing gift guides and everyone's doing those sorts of things. So it's nice to get like smaller exposure. Um, but I mean, I think there are opportunities still out there. You just, you don't want to be answering every single one. You want to answer ones that are a, truly a good fit for your product. So what I did, because, so Haro is, is free. You just Google yeah. Haro, H-A-R-O, help a reporter out. Sign up for this thing. It's awesome. And you sign up as a journalist or as a, um, a source. And so you then get, and you choose what categories you want. And you'll get a list of, here's inquiries for the day. You get it three times a day. It could be overwhelming. I set it up so it's suppressed. It goes, it skips my inbox. It gets archived unless it contains relevant keywords to me. So if one has Shopify or e-commerce in it, then it pops up in my inbox. Really? So I, yeah. So I, and that's just a Gmail. You're going to have to so show me how to do that. Isn't that smart? Yes. Yeah, it makes Haro that much more useful. All right, so lesson one is if you want to get those those great PR placements for gift guides going to the holidays, you got to sign up for Haro right now. Right now. Okay, yeah. so in five minutes, you already gave us just pure gold. <laughs> Wrap good. it up. Yay. We're done here. We're, done. We're on top of that. <laughs> so we, we celebrated your success. We did not establish what the heck it is you sell. Yes, so I am and the founder CEO of Vivian Liu. And I sell insoles that empower women to wear high heels four times longer without pain. I love this. And the, I love the, the line on the website designed by a rocket scientist. This is literally true. So it was engineered or it was designed by a podiatrist and engineered by a rocket scientist. Yes. Those two and gentlemen still are the two principals in the company today. Yep. And this was a thing that you were interested, you were like act, active in the online shoe community? <laughs> if you will. So I actually, at the time this happened, was working full time in corporate America, I had two young kids, um, and was looking for a creative outlet. So I kind of had lost myself. And one, I, this was in 2012 that I started my shoe blog called Mama's Shoes. 
But honestly, I wrote to it uh, once a week. I highlighted a pair of shoes, a pair of heels that I loved. And I had a whole whopping something like 36 followers. I mean, this was not a blog that I was looking to monetize. It was simply a creative outlet. And through, I wrote to that uh, sporadically for two years. And then in 2014, I stumbled upon a forum online doing some research for the, for the blog, um, a blog post. And these women were talking about this insult called insolia. And I was like, why have I never heard of this thing? I wear high heels every day. I write a shoe blog. I've never seen this product. So I, this is not something that I typically would do, but I picked up the phone and I called the chairman and I was like, why have I never heard of your product? <laughs> long, long story short, he's like, we're a bunch of MIT engineers and scientists and doctors trying to market this product to women. And we have no idea what we're doing. And so I'm like, in my copious spare time, I'll help you market this product for a cut of incremental sales. And so he sent me samples. I took him to Las Vegas. I wore high heels. I'm like, dang, these things are magical. So he came back. He's like, look, we're really not uh, pursuing the direct to, market, direct to consumer market anymore. We've transitioned and we now manufacture insoles that are built directly into shoes. We don't want to handle customer service, marketing, all this kind of stuff. He's like, but if you want it, you can become our worldwide exclusive distributor. And I was like, yes, no clue what I was getting myself into like no idea but I was like yes and then as he as we're like continuing conversations in the back of my head I'm like I don't know what I'm doing what the heck am I doing oh my gosh this is crazy but uh yeah it's been so much fun so many ups and downs so many lessons learned about myself about business and um it's just it's amazing to be able to talk about high heels every day and <laughs> So how long ago was that? How many years have you been? So there? launched in October of 2014. And so, so we've got, uh, so you have four Black Fridays under your belt and uh, one well, coming up. I, no, I would say I have three because it was a hobby business until I took it legitimately in 2016. So 2016, I hosted my first like real holiday sale. So it's three holiday seasons, I would say. Three and we got one coming up. One coming up. Okay. So out of three. Yes. Let's start with what was the, what was your biggest success? Um, 2017 was my most successful Black Friday, Cyber Monday slash holiday year. Um, and I think the biggest lesson learned was in last year, Q4 of 2018, I had too many sales leading up to Black Friday. So I had a Halloween sale. I had a thank you sale of sorts. And then I did my Black Friday, Cyber Monday sale. One thing about my product, and I'm testing something different this year. So I'm interested to talk through this with you. But um, one thing about my product is women buy it for themselves, not necessarily to gift. And I feel like Black Friday, Cyber Monday is often... Um, let me see what kind of um, deals I can get to gift other people versus, you know, setting myself up for a comfortable yet stylish holiday season. So um, this year, I think I'm going to do, well, I am, I've already planned it out. I am going to do a pre Black Friday, Cyber Monday sale. So women who want to look stylish, feel great, all of this kind of stuff can buy in bulk. So my biggest sale at 40% off is going to be two weeks prior to Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Then I also am going to host a Black Friday, Cyber Monday sale, but it's not going to be as big as my um, pre-sale. And then we've done this 12 days of Christmas, um, kind of leading up to Christmas sale too, and we'll do that as well. So we go, you're going to run an, uh, I call these early bird sales. An early bird sale, yes, which is going to be my big gangbuster best sale of the year. So hopefully we get the attention and the eyeballs outside of the Black Friday, Saber Monday craziness. I love this idea. And I love the idea that, hey, you're buying for yourself. Correct. And you're on, potentially you're on your feet all day Thanksgiving. If you're going to the okay. mall, Black Friday, yeah. same deal. Yep. Um, and I'm like, just thinking about my own wife, always dresses super nice at Thanksgiving, wears heels. So you're right. Like suddenly this makes a ton of sense. Yeah. Are, how are you going to position the sale? Are you going to paint that picture for people? Oh, for sure. And so like, it'll be like, be the hostess with the mostest or look your best on Thanksgiving or, you know, 
fashionable in the fall, you know, whatever, whatever the taglines are going to be, it's going to be buy for you. So, you know, this is a chance heading into the holiday season to make sure that you feel stylish, you feel fashionable, you feel comfortable in all of your holiday outfits. I love how tapped into the customer mindset you are and the customer profile you are. Because if you were just like, hey, Kurt, here's some Dr. Scholl's, sell these for Black Friday. I would not come up with anything half this clever. <laughs> Whereas because you have such a clear idea of who the customer is and right. why they're buying you're able to come up with not just a sale, but this incredibly compelling story that empowers the sale. And that, that copywriting, that's what's going to make all the difference. For sure. Where did, how'd you come up with this idea? It's fabulous. Well, um, cause I went back and looked at my numbers and to be quite honest, I mean, Q4 is always where we do the most business, but my black Friday, cyber Monday sales haven't been gangbuster. And I'm like, what's going on? You know, I always have like this big vision of bigger sales and whatnot. And we had great success this year with a mother's day sale. So I'm like outside of like these big traditional sales, that's where we get the eyeballs. Cause there, I feel like women in my age group of my customers, particularly, which is like 38 to 65, like they're concerned about hosting people or buying for other people or hosting holiday parties or going to Christmas parties. And I feel like if you can capture their attention outside of when they're focused on other people and can really truly focus on themselves, that's when we'll be able to capture the most sales and get our insoles in the most hands or feet. <laughs> so in, in promoting this, this campaign, you're you running it really, it's like there's three separate campaigns that are going to happen. It's the early yeah. bird, the Black Friday itself, and then 12 days of Christmas. Yep. How do you, and you do, you put up some serious numbers. How do you forecast that inventory, especially if you're saying, hey, buy it now to get it in time for Thanksgiving? How do you make sure that you've got enough, that you've got the right amount, or that you don't overbuy? So I'm tear, logistics and fulfillment, that is where my knowledge gap begins to get as big as the Grand Canyon. <laughs> I know nothing. <laughs> Okay, well, note to self and to others, don't change your packaging and don't move your inventory cross country in October, which is because you did this. I am in the midst of this right now. So it's a little bit logistically crazy at the moment, but um, I, my biggest nightmare is running out of inventory. Like that just is my biggest nightmare. So I um, am guilty on sitting on quite a bit of inventory. I am never scared of running out. Um, now that said, my insoles, um, it's not, it's, it's a big outlay of cash, but I have a different margin, um, than other folks in the e-commerce space. So I have the privilege of being able to sit on some inventory. So, um, yeah, I just, I am always prepared and always plan for, doesn't always happen, but doubling my last Q4. Oh my God. Okay. Lofty <laughs> yeah. goals, but so why fingers not? Cro fingers crossed. Yeah. No, but then, but then we, I mean, we have our busy season goes well into May. Like we don't start dropping off until June. So I'm, I'm never just sitting on inventory. We have good inventory turns. Okay. So forecasting really works in your favor because you've got, uh, it's a high margin product and you've got this very long selling cycle and you're really just, you said, all right, I'm going to double it. Are you just said, is this, uh, are you taking an approach of uh, the goldfish grows to the size of the bowl where if you say, listen, I'm going to acquire this much inventory. That's how good the sale's going to go where it becomes self-fulfilling. Oh, maybe. Yeah. I'm just putting it out there. I have inventory. Come buy it. <laughs> But it's, um, I'm never fearful of not being able to sell my inventory. My insoles sell really well. So I, I will never put myself in a position of sitting on too much inventory and not being able to get rid of it. And let's, let's change gears. So we sure. talked about promotions. We talked about uh, a little bit about inventory. Uh, logistically, uh, you use a 3PL, right? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Do... Is there anything that goes into preparing? Do they talk to you? Do you give them a heads up uh, before you know, you're running this early bird sale? Is there right. anything you do differently 
to get the the three PL in their their best possible position. Yeah. Deliver. So this year, absolutely, because it's a new uh, partner, and so I need to help them forecast kidding. So when I get my my product, we got the insoles raw or in bulk from China, and then all of the packaging, all of the kidding is done in the U.S. So we need to be able to sit on and forecast when these kits need to happen, how many need to be on the shelves, all of that kind of stuff. Um, how do you, do, year, how do you forecast that? Um, look, historic. Um, last year, so I partnered with Giddy Up last year, um, and they blew my Q4 out of the water. It was absolutely phenomenal. And briefly tell us what Giddy Up does, because they have an interesting approach. Sure. So Giddy Up, I would call them kind of a super affiliate management partner. So they um, put together, um, you kind of work with them. They put together offers. They kind of send send those offers out to their affiliate partners. They can actually offer it in 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 house too in some of their advertising. Um, and then you pay them a commission for every sale that they generate. So it's, it's truly like a super affiliate network. And they were so, they blew my Q4 out of the water last year. So thank goodness my um, partner last year, they were so on top of product and kidding and whatnot. I mean, there were days where we're like, we're short, literally like 200 insoles and they would just get them out. I mean, it was just like, it was phenomenal. Um, so I think if you partner with um, a 3PL that has that capacity to really staff up um, and ramp up when you're busy and then slow back down when you're slow, they're out there. There, there are lots of them. Um, but I think if you know as a business owner that you ramp up really quickly and can ramp down quickly, that you just communicate that with your partner and make sure that they're able to meet your needs. In, so it sounds like you've got, you've got fulfillment covered. You've yeah. got your promotions covered. Do you do anything to change up your team? Do you, you like have to add someone for customer support? Because you run things lean. Very lean. So I actually have, um, it's a VA team. So I don't have any formal employees. All of my partners are contractors. And so I contract with an amazing uh, virtual assistant team. Um, contemporary virtual assistants. And so I have a lead, I have two lead people on my customer service team, and then they can, if it needs to be staffed up or, or ramped up, they have other people from their pool, their teams that they can pull onto my account. Um, and then throughout the year, they actually rotate people on to customer service for Vivian Liu. So in case someone's on vacation, in case people need to be ramped up, everyone is well versed in my product and how to handle returns and my Shopify backend and all that kind of stuff. It sounds like you have an incredibly agile business. Yeah, it's awesome. So I, we can, I can just kind of plug out, you know, plug in, plug out how, depending on how kind of the business balloons and comes back together. And, um, you know, I've, people have said that I have two things. One, introduce friction because there, there's so many people and hands on that, People may, may not be talking the same thing, but I'm always the, I'm always the cog. So I always communicate. With, I don't rely on other vendors to talk to other vendors. I am always involved in those conversations. So there's continuity, there's consistency. And I know I pay a premium. So I know that I pay more to have these um, kind of contractors separated out from each other than hiring one that could handle maybe half of what I contract out. I purposely don't hand off huge chunks of my businesses to contractors um, kind of as a safety measure. So if something goes sideways and let's just say um, my Google ad agency isn't performing well, I can plug them out or pull them out and I can go in and do my Google ads for a while while I find a new agency and plug that hole. So I would never want to find an agency that does my Facebook ads, my Google AdWords, all of my paid advertising because if something goes sideways and I have to pull that whole piece of the business out, now I'm plugging up myself, Facebook, Google, you know, all of those things. So I, um, I purposely plug people into very specific roles within my business. I have always admired how you run your business. Well, do you, uh, for Q4, do you change how you work at all? Not really. I mean, I, so one of the things I take great um, pleasure in is 
Facebook ads and writing my own emails. And so and you're so good really, at copywriting. Yeah, so well, good. Thank you. So it's like, it's, this is, this is a fun time for me because I get to be creative and come up with new ideas and test things and whatnot. So um, I really just get excited about being able to test new things during this time of the year. And what kind of things are you testing? Uh, just ads and content and um, those sorts of things like what sort of what sort of photos convert well right now? We had so much success for the longest time with these illustrated shoes, which are part of our packaging, and they don't seem to convert anymore. And it's just so interesting to me um, why, you know. And and for the longest time, the color red converted for us, and now yellow seems to be converting really well. It's just all these like mm. I just find these things fascinating. So I just have a lot of fun. <laughs> Well, it certainly makes life easier when you're you're passionate about what you do. Yeah. Um, so, what is what tools do you use in your business? Like what? So, Clavio is a great tool. I mean, really, I use a lot of kind of free. Uh, Clavio is not free, but uh, tools. Um, Google Analytics. I love you know looking at that. So it's it's really I run my business really lean and just look you know at the basics. I have, I keep spreadsheets of, you know, how the business is performing every day. So it's really, it's really, I keep it simple and on purpose. And I know I probably could grow the business a lot bigger, but the more I complicate things, the less one profitable the business becomes. And two, I feel like I don't have a handle on things and it gets a little wonky. So I like to keep things really clean, really simple and fun. <laughs> so in those and I think that's important. In those spreadsheets, what are the the KPIs that you find yourself looking at most uh, during Black Friday? Uh, cost per acquisition. So my the main KPI I look at is how much it costs to acquire a customer or to make a sale. And so I look at you know Facebook ads. I look at my Google ads. I look at we run some Bing ads, not very often. Um, you know, emails that go out, all of that. And I try and keep my CPA at a certain level. Now, granted, that CPA goes up over the holiday season. Advertising across the board is way more expensive in Q4 than it is any other time of the year. But people are making bigger purchases during that time of the year too. So you just have to look at your profitability um, and know your margin to make sure that you have that capacity to um, kind of live within a higher CPA range. And uh, getting, as things get more expensive, like there's a big cash outlay up front. Um, do you, have you ever used any uh, financing options? Like there's Shopify Capital out there. Um, have you ever used any of those things? Yes. Into Q4? Yes. I love PayPal. PayPal is the most amazing company when it comes to lending. So they have working capital um, loans that you can get literally just through your account. They don't run a credit check. It's all based on how much volume comes through your PayPal account. So it's just legit, like lit, literally through just your business. You don't have to, there's no ding on your credit score or any of that. It's so simple, so easy. And then you can pay it back. Every transaction that's made through PayPal, you can, I think it ranges from, you can pay back 10% to 30% of every sale that comes through PayPal they just take out to pay out your loan. So it's not like you have to write them a check every week or anything's being pulled out of your bank account. It's just literally taken out of every transaction that comes through PayPal. Hmm. Most amazing, amazing thing. It's PayPal working capital. Highly, highly recommend it. And if you have questions, pick up a phone and someone actually answers the phone and you can talk through it with them. It's incredible. Another, um, lending or loan option that I've used is loan builder through PayPal. And that's a more traditional loan. Um, but their origination fees are so low. So I have a line of credit through my bank that I've never tapped because it's so much higher than a PayPal working capital or the loan builder loans. So highly recommend PayPal if you're looking for some um, funding options. Looking at the past, exploring lessons learned, have you ever had any Black Friday disasters? <laughs> um, not really. Knock on wood. Um, we've always had enough inventory. We've always been able to make things right. 
Um, I would say the thing that we have struggled with the most and still continue to struggle with is international shipping. So we opened up international fulfillment um, a year and a half, two years ago. And we still struggle, particularly around holiday season, with um, getting product to people on time. In other and countries. what's the, what region is it? What's the struggle with, with international shipping that you're finding? Last year, I think it was Canada was our big nightmare. And that was because the post like just fell apart. I think it was just a crazy, crazy time. Um, but uh, Europe, we don't seem to have any problems with, but it's like getting it to like Singapore, uh, things get lost. And, you know, it's just, um, I don't know when, I love that we're able to offer this as an option, but for some reason, all the, the, the shipping options out of the U S internationally just have not worked for me. And that's on my, that's on me. That's not on anyone else. I just haven't spent time looking for a good option, but I also have a fulfillment center in the UK. So the UK fulfillment center fulfills all of um, Amazon UK in EU um, orders and ships it out to all the European customers. So um, yeah, they have it really dialed in. It's just, cool. need, I need to get it dialed in <laughs> for the other areas. Well, what's the other area? Where do you see yourself as, as deficient? Where would you like to improve? It, like international shipping for sure. Um, one thing, like just as a business, one thing that I really need to do and, um, and committed to doing this holiday season is influencer marketing. So we have not done any influencer partnerships, marketing, anything, um, even with our customers. And so I feel like that's a huge missed opportunity, not only for sales, but really for the brand and exposure. Um, and there are a lot of fashion bloggers who do these 30 dresses in 30 days challenges or kind of showcases. I'm like, what a great opportunity to just send them. I don't even need them to buy, just send them some insoles and say, hey, if you're pairing your dresses with high heels, and you happen to love our product, just tag it in one of your photo photos or whatever. So, um, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. But I think that's a huge, huge opportunity for the brand. And again, with, with a few Black Fridays under your belt, have you noticed consumer behavior change around this holiday? Well, I think um, – Everyone and their brother have are now, you know, doing Black Friday, Cyber Monday sales. And so I think it gets really noisy and really crowded. And I think for products like mine, where it's not necessarily gifted, but used for the self, like the, the person buying it, um, either having a, like a big sale before Black Friday or after Black Friday, I think, I, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm fingers crossed that this make, gets big more traction because we kind of got... Black Friday, Cyber Monday was lower for us last year than it was in 2017. And so I'm thinking, again, kind of stepping outside of the traditional Black Friday, Cyber Monday timeframe is going to be beneficial. I agree. I've seen um, several brands are doing this this year. And I know uh, I talked to Ezra Firestone about it. And they're going to do uh, an early bird sale that starts November 8th. Yeah. And I think that that's what I've been really pitching um, to, to people when they ask me. I'm like, hey why don't you try like this gives you the opportunity to reward your your loyal customers yeah. you know segment it to anyone who made a purchase in the last 12 months um and as a really a way to uh, soft launch and test your black friday offers in yes. advance and yes. potentially get the sale twice because the sale is sure. going to run two times well and it's like um for me, women buy these insoles really twice a year. Like our repeat customers buy them really in the holiday season and then like late springish. Um, and so it's kind of a good reminder, like buy them, remind yourself how much you love them and then gift them. So like you have this, like remind how much, like remind yourself how much you love them. And then, Oh, by the way, with our new packaging, it makes it a heck of a lot easier to give these out to people as gifts and as stocking stuffers and all sorts of stuff. So super excited to kind of announce this new packaging um, that will help it, that makes our insoles easier to get. Uh, we have to, we have to wrap this up shortly. Sure. What is the number? I want to know two things. What is the number one thing that you're worried about? What keeps you up at night and what should 
what would you recommend merchants focus on for a successful Black Friday? Oh, wow. Okay, what keeps me up at night? Um, <laughs> right now, um, it's uh, which theme I should use for my store. No, I'm kidding. I, uh, I, I'm struggling with conversion rates right now, even though they're not bad. Like my conversion rate. That's the crazy bad. part. Your conversion rate is incredibly high. I know. You knock it off. I know. I just like take some stress and anxiety meds and go to bed. Like my site is fine. It's totally fine. So, but that's the one thing that's keeping me up and I just need to like go back to sleep because it's totally fine. Um, one thing to focus on for Black Friday, I would say is, um, again, making it stand out from all of the other offers. So again, I think it kind of goes back to creative copywriting. Like how do you capture the people's, like someone's attention outside of 40% off, buy it now. Like how do you tell a story around your product? How is it relevant to people now? How is it relevant to people who are going to be buying this to gift? You know, just kind of creating a story around your products, um, I think really is, is key. Um, and you know, I do really silly things to get like the attention. Like I write like twas the night before Christmas and I'm like, twas the night before Thanksgiving and I'll write a little poem. Twas the night before your holiday party and I'll write a little poem. And it's all about like my insoles and like feeling like good, you're ready to go and look your best. So, I mean, it's just like, I don't know, funny, quirky things like that, that I think help capture the attention of your consumer. Well, and to your point, you said, hey, it, it is going to be the noisiest time ever. Yeah. So I think that's where having unexpected content like a poem about insoles yeah is what's going uh to <laughs> to capture people's attention imagination and ultimately you know, get them to make the purchase absolutely mr derrick hello I, i'm laughing over here i love it uh, <laughs> i love the idea of of there being a poem in my inbox about this and I did share uh, these insoles with my wife because she always, always wearing platforms, if not heels. Um, awesome. Because she's 50 tall. So I think you've got another customer as well. Yay. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, guys, that was amazing. You talked about, um, you, co you covered it all from inventory planning, customer service, financing options, cus uh, conversion rate, even um, we touching on what, you know, the opportunity of influencer marketing. Um, so I, I love it all.